Let's now move on to the latest from Sri Lanka as the South Asian country is now finding some sort of way out from its snowballing economic as well as political crisis. The island nation reconvened its parliament earlier today and all eyes are now on the no-confidence motion which will be tabled by the opposition against the Prime Minister Mahinda Rajpaksha. Yesterday, the main opposition, the SJB, handed over a no-confidence motion against the President and another one against the Prime Minister to Parliament. Amid speculation on his resignation, the Prime Minister has now dismissed the reports of his resignation as being false. Maintaining that he will not resign from the Premiership, Mahinda Rajapaksha has now spoken for the first time since President Gotabaya initiated the formation of a national government with coalition. Speaking to the Daily Mirror, the Prime Minister said, and I quote, I am confident of winning the motion. If the President tells me to go, I will leave immediately. But there has been no such request. Another crucial test for the government and the opposition is the election of a new deputy speaker. After the resignation of the former deputy speaker, a vote to select a new deputy speaker will now take place tomorrow. Several parliamentarians have confirmed that his resignation from the post of deputy speaker has been accepted by the president. The Sri Lankan finance minister Ali Sabri made a statement on the state of the economy in parliament where he highlighted the worst economic crisis that the country is currently facing. Remember, Colombo needs to pay $51 billion in external debt. Sabri expressed hopelessness in the resolution of the current crisis as he said that it will take years to pull back from this crisis. He further suggested that it's up to the political leaders to either find an end to the plight or to continue to drag it on for further years. The country's finance minister also shared his plans to replace its current unrealistic budget Working in the same direction, the nation is in talks now with the World Bank to extend its support by $300 million to $700 million. The island nation is critically short of foreign exchange and has sought an emergency bailout from the International Monetary Fund. Inflation and shortages of imported food, fuel and medicines have now led to weeks of protests. Within the next two weeks, Sri Lanka will appoint financial and legal advisors for, for a proposed restructuring of its sovereign debt. And now for more details on the ongoing political and economic crisis in Sri Lanka, we are now being joined by our correspondent Dasuni Athora from Colombo. Dasuni, thanks so much for joining us. My first question to you, we are now hearing reports of Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha reacting to his resignation claims. What has he said and how should this be interpreted? Social media was rife with various reports noting that Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa is in fact set to step down or hand over his resignation, paving the way for President Gotabe Rajapaksa to go for a coalition government. However, speaking to a local media outlet, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa has now confirmed once again that he does not intend to step down and that he is also pretty confident that he does have it in him and the confidence of the parliamentarians to securely come out of a no-confidence motion that is now being put forward by the main opposition party, the Samagi Janabalavegya. However, the Prime Minister has also made an interesting remark that President Gotabe Rajapaksa has not in fact asked Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa to resign as of yet and that provided that he still secures the confidence of the parliament, the Prime Minister does not intend to step down. Right, just to follow up to that, Dasuni, also the Sri Lankan finance minister has now outlined a massive plan to pull the country back from the economic turmoil that it is currently facing, which has gone on for weeks. We have seen protests on streets. So how has the opposition reacted to this plan? The session started off with an opening statement made by the finance minister Ali Sabri, who explained to the House on the current developments regarding the financing of Sri Lanka's economy as well as how Sri Lanka will be coming out of its worsening economic crisis. Now in his speech startling revelations especially regarding statistics were made where the finance minister confirmed that Sri Lanka now only possesses a little less than 50 million US dollars in foreign reserves, which is highly inadequate to finance the country's well-being. And he also stressed that help will be needed, especially from foreign countries in aid, as well as assistance through various loans and credit lines to come out of the current crisis. Now, the opposition, while commending 
the finance minister's honesty and transparency in letting the country know of its actual situation also highlighted that it was the mismanagement of the present government over the past few months that has in fact led this country into this situation while reiterating that they are not willing to work with the present government. We on World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.